All right, Adam, we're going to put you on the spot right now. So uh, you had a question You had a question on this guy. Um, so yeah, I recently did a repair, and it was impossible to see the legs afterwards. But if I got different angles as seen below, I could see little specks of black. Is that a failed repair? So let's pull this guy up. <clears throat> so do you mean the little, little, it looks like a little bubble right there. Is that kind of what you're talking about? No, not necessarily that, like more so because I drilled into that chip. Um, I was more so referring to, I think in that one, you can see the four legs going off to the side. Um, those are what I was referring to, where if I would step back a little bit or move my head to the left or the right, those would disappear. And then mm -hmm. if I would center myself to the repair, then they would appear black like that picture. Okay. You're saying the legs would appear black? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So yeah, with this guy, and then um, to give you like some reference, I guess we can go back to the one where it looked like before. All right. So here's the before, obviously. So obviously, um, yeah, not repaired yet. That's what it looked like before. And then after the repair, we got this. So my assumption on this guy would be that these legs are partially filled so meaning not like halfway but they're fully filled they're just not they're just not filled completely throughout the whole entire leg so the resin probably went through the whole leg but it mm -hmm. didn't go through the whole leg uh completely if that makes sense so it's not that the yeah. resin stopped halfway throughout a leg, you know, it didn't look, it doesn't look like that. It might look like it right here, actually, if you can see where you're pointing and uh -huh. right there, that, that might be where, like where the resin could have stopped halfway and didn't reach the, the tip of the, the crack. But like with these ones over here, um, so yeah, that, that one like might be the guy, a reflection of this guy, but like, let's say for example, this one and this one, this one, for example, right here, the resin probably flew or probably um, went all the way throughout the crack, although it didn't necessarily fill the full crack, if that makes sense. So po possibly what happened was like half of the full crack is not filled and there's still probably air in there. So that's probably why you see the black. Now, mm -hmm. you're not going to get a complete, you're not going to make it disappear completely. So don't really expect them to completely vanish. At the end of the day, these cracks are still there, right? So when we fill them in, the crack is still there. We don't make it, you know, we don't like necessarily put the crack back together. We don't, you know, we, do, we can't make it completely vanish, but mm. it should look a lot less noticeable. Now, like what you're saying, when you see, like when you look at it at different angles and you kind of notice that it's, you know, it, it looks more noticeable this angle than it does this angle, that is definitely normal. Um, even with a completely filled crack, you, you know, you take all the air out, you completely fill it. That is that's normal to see the scar that it leaves but um if there is any air in there it makes the the crack and the scar more prominent meaning that there's open spaces in that crack so that might be what's going on right here again it's kind of hard to tell like with a picture um but from what i can see with this it looks like this crack right here might not be completely filled it looks like the resin probably stopped halfway right at this point right here and then it didn't completely fill through here so to fix that, what you're gonna wanna do is kind of flex on these legs um, as you're filling it. So as you're on the injection cycle, you're gonna be flexing on with, with your scrub, you're gonna be flexing on the, on the leg, and you're gonna be able to see it open, and then you're gonna be able to see the resin flow all the way throughout the crack. Now you can do this multiple times because <clears throat> sometimes you can, uh, you can start filling the, the crack, the crack will start to fill, and then you think it's completely filled. Then you go through the cycles of taking all the air out. So you put a vacuum cycle to it and then you go back to the injection cycle and then you can flex on it again. And then it looks like it's starting to fill again. So a lot of times like the, the, the resin will kind of go throughout the crack and then come back out and basically go back into the injector. Um, that's normal. But when you take off the bridge and when you're finished repairing it, you want to make sure that you're on an injection cycle. So you, you're on an injection cycle, you flex the leg, the resin flew out or, or flows throughout the crack. It's completely filled. This one's completely filled. This one's completely filled. Everything's all filled. Then you're going to remove the, the injector from the injection cycle. Now, um, that's only if you know for a fact that the resin has, 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 uh, has made its way throughout the cracks. 
Um, again, the cycles are important because you kind of want to go through it to make sure that you're getting all the errors, all the errors completely out. And then when you're injecting it, all that resins, it's all the way throughout the crack. So that's probably what happened. That's what my assumption is. Um, I could probably tell you better if I was actually like actually there and I saw it. Um, yeah. but I'm assuming that the, the, essentially what the, what it is, is these cracks aren't completely filled. So the resin is not all the way throughout the crack. Um, some of this might be halfway and then some of it might be all the way, but it's not a completely filled crack, if that makes sense. So I would do more cycles. That's probably where you're kind of, uh, where you're, where you're kind of hitting the roadblock is maybe you didn't do enough cycles. Um, as far as this pit, I was thinking that's like kind of what you were talking about. It was like this little like hole right here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming it might be an air pocket, either that, or it could be that you drilled too much or too deep into the, into the chip. Um, you possibly could have drilled into the laminate, which caused the laminate to kind of disform. And then you kind of see that little like bubble right there. It shouldn't look like that. <clears throat> um, so that's probably what you did is you might have drilled a little bit too deep. Uh, another, uh, another way that this could have happened would be, um, when you cured over the chip, you and i talk about this in the course because this is the way that i used to do it all the time but then i figured that uh i was getting this problem where little air pockets would kind of form right here so the way i used to do it and the way that i talk about in the course is i would do the injection cycle do the vacuum cycle make sure it's all filled when i'm ready to take off the bridge i'll take off the bridge i wouldn't clean the glass i would just put my dab of uh, pit fill on the glass while it's still wet while it still has the excess resin on the on the surface of it i would put the dab of pit pill pit fill I would put my curing tab and then I would cure it over. Now, the problem with this about, I don't know, like 80%, 90% of the time, what happens is an air pocket's going to form inside of there. Now, the reason for this is because you're, you're injecting the resin inside. And then as you go throughout the process of putting the pit fill on, putting the curing tab, and then you start to cure it, as, that, as you're doing that, air pockets are kind of forming back up inside of the chip um, for whatever reason. Um, I don't know if it's a gravity thing or what it is, but essentially when you lay the curing tab on there, it kind of creates almost like a self vacuum to it, to where air pockets kind of form inside of the pit. So in that little pit pit spot, in that little like hole, that opening of the chip, um, those air pockets will form and you won't notice them because you'll put your curing tab right or your, uh, your curing light right over it and you're curing it over. You think it's all filled. You think it's a good repair and then you take off the curing light and you see little air pockets that weren't there before. So that's the reason why that happens. So to prevent that, what I like to do is I'll do the chip repair. I'll fill it in, do the cycles, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm confident that it's completely filled. I would take off the injector and then I'll wipe down the glass. So I'll wipe down the, the, the chip with like a rag with just like a microfiber or whatever you're using. I'll wipe it down like dry. So there's no excess resin on the surface. I'll grab my curing light and I'll put the curing light directly on the repair. So I didn't put no pit fill yet. I didn't put a, a curing tab. I'm just curing over what's inside of the rock chip, right? So I cleaned it off. I put the curing, the curing light on. I cured it over so it hardens up all the resin inside of the chip. Again, this all this resin is a lot uh, lighter viscosity, so it's a lot thinner. So when I'm curing this over, it hardens up that. Now I'm going to do that for like a, just a, like 30 seconds, maybe a minute until it's cured over. Now I'm going to take my light off. And then I'm going to grab my, my pit fill and I'm going to put the pit fill right on the, the pit. And then I'm going to put my curing tab over like normal. And then I'm going to cure over, I'm going to cure it over again. So that what's that, what that's doing is basically curing over the pit fill on top. And, um, it's just curing over the, the, the repair again, you're pretty much curing over the pit fill, um, and then, uh, hardening up the, the surface basically. So the first cycle of or the first curing process is going to be just the chip. So it's going to be the in the inside uh, the resin the the pit fill resin, and then the second one I'm going to be carrying over the um, the pit fill. So the reason for this is to basically harden up the resin inside first with that first cycle of of carrying it. That way, the little bubbles that I was having troubles with wouldn't come up, and when those come up, then you can't really get rid of them unless you drill back into it and whatnot. So when I cure it over that first time. That's going to cure it over, making sure that those air pockets aren't going to form. And then when I put the pit fill on, that's a thicker resin, right? So the air pockets are going to be a lot harder to kind of form in there. I'll put the pit fill on, put the curing tab. I'll cure it over once more. And that's going to kind of basically harden up that point now. 
So that was the the way that I kind of worked around getting those little air pockets. I'm not sure if that is an air pocket or yeah, like you said, it might be that that drill mark. Um, but if you do run into that issue, um, that is a good way to kind of prevent that from happening. So, um, but other than that, man, like it's like if we go back, like it looks a lot better. Um, I'm not sure you've done windshield repair, right, Adam? Before? Yeah, I have for probably like five months. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, it, you, you haven't been doing it that long. You don't have that much practice. So that's all it takes really is just practice and kind of messing around with these. So obviously it looks a lot better, right? Like you're like, these, these, these cracks are filled. Um, like that one, it looks like it was, com it was completely filled, but there might've been air pockets in there. And then as you can see, this is, this is when you, before you start to repair it, you can see the black inside of these cracks. All that is is air. So the human eye picks it up as air. Um, so all that is, is air pockets inside of the crack. So if you do see that after you repair the chip, if we go back, if you do see any of those after you repair the chip, um, go to this one. Yeah. If you do see any of that, like right there, that might be air pockets inside of there, uh, right here, that might be air pockets. This one right here, it might not be completely filled. It looks like this isn't filled at all. So it might've just, the resin might've just stopped right here and it didn't com completely go to the tip of the crack. So that's kind of like what you're looking for. You know, you want to make sure that there is no air pockets in there. Um, but at the end of the day, you are still going to see a scar. So you kind of have to decipher, you know, which, uh, which is which. So you got to make sure that it is filled, expect to see a scar, but, um, but yeah, it should, it should be a very minimal scar. If that kind of makes sense. Um, does that kind of help? Yeah, that does. Um, with one like that, with there still being air pockets is that still at risk to spread out in the future it definitely is um the biggest thing is like is clarity you know you want to make sure that they look good for your customers and whatnot a lot of times when you do have air pockets inside of there your, your customer might notice that right it's just going to be a lot more prominent um mm -hmm. so so yeah that's the biggest thing is vi is visual clarity but there is a chance for them to spread because if there is an air pocket in there that's air so if it's sitting down in the sun it gets heated up um, and yeah, those, that air starts to expand with heat, right? So when it starts to expand inside of that air pocket, it kind of pushes the, the glass, right? It, it creates tension on the glass and that's what could start to make them spread out. So that's why it's super important to, to get all of the air out of the chip, um, while you're doing the repair to make sure that you're not leaving any air inside, because if you do, there is that chance of it spreading. Now, is it going to for sure spread? No, but there is still that chance. You know what I mean? So to do a proper repair, to do a really good repair, you want to make sure all the air is out of the chip and it's completely filled. That's the whole like premise. That's the whole like idea behind it is you want to make sure that it's completely filled all the way in um, to, to really prevent you from, you know, having that, that issue later down the road of it spreading. So, um, so yeah, definitely make sure get all that air out of there and you don't want any air pockets inside of there um that's why the, the process that i just explained of like you know wiping down the, the glass carrying it over and then doing the pit fill carrying it over again that's why that's really important it's really good practice to do just because that really prevents any air pockets from forming inside of the pit um now this one obviously had a cavity right so this one had the little air cavity right here this little circle um, you did a good job of taking all the air out of there, right? You did because I don't see any air pockets after you repaired it. I don't see any air pockets in here. And that's usually where you're going to see them if you don't take all the air out. So those are the most prominent ones. Those are ones you want to make sure you're getting out for sure. Um, so that's good that you filled it in completely right there. So, so yeah, I mean, it's good repair. Um, but yeah, just little tiny like details like that might make it a, a, a better repair. Um, I'm sure the customer would have been happy. Um, especially if you gave them, you know, the, the upfront expectation of like, Hey, this isn't going to disappear, but it will look a lot less noticeable. Um, so yeah, I'm sure the customer would have been happy. Is this on a customer's car or. Uh, yeah, it was one of my friends. So it's like worst case okay. scenario, it spreads, then it's not like too big of a deal, but yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, man, I would, uh, I would practice that a little bit. Um, really just making sure that it's completely filled, you know, don't, don't, don't. Like when you are practicing, don't rush it. And that goes for like everyone. Um, actually, hold on. Make sure nobody's trying to get in, but uh, cool. Um, but yeah, it goes for everyone. You know, don't like while you're practicing, don't necessarily, um, don't necessarily rush it. You know, you, you don't necessarily need to rush it because you want to make sure that you're getting the, the reps in and you're practicing and you're seeing what's going on inside of there. So 
um, as you're doing them, you know, flex on them, flex on the, on the cracks, flex on everything, do as many cycles as needed. Uh, once you're at the point where you're like, okay, I'm not getting any more air out. It looks like it's filled. It looks pretty good. Then, you know, you can start, you know, wrapping it up, taking off your bridge, carrying it over, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, just kind of just take your time with them and just really just practice it out. So, um, but yeah, I mean, good repair, man. It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, just keep practicing. That's the, that's the biggest thing.